more the money, baby. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, baby. Respect, love, loyalty, passion, sanctified, hunger, all that good shit, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Let's get it. Yeah. See how I got Doja with Prada wow. See the sea when I'm out on Nevada uh -huh. Light blue, light Doja Gabbana Fuck, Fuck niggas, stay away from that shit Gucci belt, got a Glock on my hip uh -huh. Invest in the stock, I'm lit uh -huh. About to go with Jimmy, chew my bitch yes. Cock and zone for all yes. my kids Lane niggas, they hating the shit uh -huh. Tell them niggas, get off my dick, my dick. I'm steady, be playing the shit Yup, yup, we back at it Where they do chicken stew, family We back at it like a crack at it You already know, it's moles and money Now, we were supposed to have this one drop for y'all last week So we ran into some audio issues if we would have put that episode out, y'all would have listened to it and immediately turned it off. So it's all right because, like I said, we back at it like yes, a crack sir. addict. We ain't never gonna stop. You feel me? And make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, watch this episode all the way through, so you can receive some of the facts, some of the truth, some of the gems, some of the morals that we gonna be delivering in this beautiful episode here. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. today, you feel me? We gonna talk on the topic of the state of depression and how that affects people. How we feel like yeah. I don't want to interrupt the great content, but if you just wanted to grab you some quick drip, nice little sweatsuit, nice bag, whatever the case may be. Cop that last you... breed, man. Stop playing, man. Stop I'm... playing with us, man. You know what it is. We got the hat, socks, slides, sweatsuits. We even got some new hoodies dropping, man. Just check out my Instagram, King Willow underscore Eminem, and follow that on Instagram, last of a flying breed. Last of a flying breed. Let's get it. We feel like that word of being depressed has been utilized as a crutch for some people. And we feel like it's a real thing. That is a real disease for people, right? Yes, sir. But at the end of the day, time is going to keep moving. And even though that you are in this state of depression, you are in this state of sadness, that you aren't by yourself because... You may not have somebody close to you, but you can speak to somebody all the time. Like, not all the time, but you can speak to somebody. Loved and you ones can are get around. Through, you can get through this tough times that you're going through. Loved ones is normally around. And I feel like ones. as human beings, all we need to do is, is really ask if somebody is okay, how they're doing, check on them, and show some empathy. and S Slightly. 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 To the world because... Somebody's going through something all the time. So, with that being said, how would we how how would Google define depression? So, Google and uh, Dictionary dot com got the definitions of the depression as a depressed or sunken place, an area lower than the surrounding surface, sadness, gloom, dejection. Um, in economics terms, a, a period dur during which businesses Employment and the stock market values decline severely or remain at a very low level of activity, such as the Great Depression of 1920. And also, in uh, geographical terms, an area completely or most surrounded by higher land, ordinarily having inter interior drainage and not comforting to the valley of a single stream. That's more like a deep impression, that one too. So it has multiple definitions from what we know. What was, what's your definition of depression, bro? Well, my, my definition of depression is being in a state of sadness, confusion, being lost, and not feeling like you're loved, not feeling accepted. That is, uh, that is the notion and, and the things that I perceive of the definition of depression. depression. My definition for it, I say like depression is just a deep impression that someone or a specific thing or a specific situation left left on you. Like it left a deep impression, mm -hmm. you know, like something scarred you and inflicted a wound so deep that you can't forget about it. Right. So now every day, you know, it, it lingers and it carries and stuff like that. So, you know, we could describe depression from many different perspectives, many different directions. But the thing about it now is, what's the issue with depression today? That's my big issue. Right. And like, like I mentioned, I feel like depression, the, the word, the disease, is sometimes being used as a crutch for some people. It is. And 
I don't want to neglect nobody's feelings. I don't want to neglect what anybody goes through. But some people use that word and they aren't in this state of true depression. True depression. As in you're, you're in the state of true lostness or you're in a state of true dejection. Emptiness. Right. Regret. And, and the fact that depression has become so prevalent in the last, I would say, 10 to 15 years, especially with us growing up and it being seen in children and, and young teenagers, I feel like that's where we need to, as a community, as a world, as a people, we need to really take heed of it and address it at the forefront. And when I say address it at the forefront, like I said, we need to ask people how they're doing on a regular. We need to check on people. We need to to just not just worry about ourselves as individuals. All right? So so what about the people who suffer from depression, like who claim that they're depressed, but they might have just lost a job mm-hmm. or they can't find a love or mm-hmm. they ain't got enough money or they don't meet society's description of a successful person or a happy per- person like what do you have to say about those people who pull a depression card i feel like those people like those people have to one look themselves in the mirror because at the end of the day we all make decisions right and any decision that you make is the reason why you're in a position that you are in in the the current state of your life in the current month day whatever you in if you're depressed is because you seemingly made some decisions or sometimes whatever was out of your control you didn't handle right you didn't handle beforehand and now something else happened because it's life is kind of like a domino effect something else happened that trickled down and now you're in a situation of maybe regret or maybe you just in a situation where you didn't think you would be in but you probably could have prevented it five steps ahead so you want to know the funny part all right so just to talk about men for a little, the suicide rate for men, I think is like at 80, 85%, mm. 80%, something like that, 85%. I had Googled it before. I don't got my phone right now. But from what I saw, that's what I, I saw about 80, 85%. That's the suicide rate for men. Mm-hmm. But the difference within that is that with most of the people who fit into that percentage, ever since social media became a thing, a lot of people have been offing themselves because they don't feel comfortable in the society that they live in. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these people do suffer from mental health. Um, a lot of the people, you know, do be like behind the closet, you know, not trying to express themselves completely because they're not accepted 100 percent. But at the same time, that kind of to me, like it kind of takes away from the people who are suffering from true depression. Like right. I was watching a video on TikTok and. Matter of fact, now it's on YouTube. It's Scarlet Lip Interview. The Scarlet Lip Interview with Vlad. And I know people probably checked, saw this already and checked it out. But she was based, Vlad was interviewing her on her childhood and everything. And she pretty much had to find like the confidence or the strength to be able to explain to Vlad that she was molested by her aunt's boyfriend at 12 years old. Damn, that's fucked up. It's crazy. OD. And that's fucked up. she was able to look in that camera and tell her story, right? Mm -hmm. And then still go make music and and be happy and chill around her friends. And as she's explaining the story, she's saying that around the time when her mom did pass, the very last day of her mom's life, she chose to go hang out with her friends. So then she didn't get to see her mom before she passed. Mm. That's true depression, bro. Right. You feel me? But she get up every day, as we see, uh, young aspiring artists. She could have took her life a long time ago. A long time ago. She could have been crashed out. But as we can see, an individual like that, we may not know what she's suffering on the deep end, but what she's portraying to us is that she's strong right. and that she can handle it. So when I see stuff like that, it instantly just hits me. Like, people pulling that depression card now, but how true is it? Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So would we say that, one, men, men and women get this get into a state of depression, right? And I looked it up about depression and how it affects both sides, right? And what what I found is a closer look reveals that while men are diagnosed with depression half as often as women and are less likely to attempt suicide, men die more. by suicide three to four times more frequently. More frequently. Although there is no one-to-one correspondence between depression and suicide, 
depression is one of suicide's most significant risk factors. So, like you just said, that young lady was raped before. She's been through mis- molestation. And she lost her mother and her father. And she lost her mother and her father. So now she's living in this world kind of alone, as in immediate family-wise. You feel me? Because sometimes our mother and father, or brothers and sisters, are the closest one to us. We are sometimes always closest to our cousins and, and aunts and uncles because they may be somewhere else. Right? We don't have... Some, we're, we're the closest, but other people aren't, right? Mm-hmm. So it's to say, like, women can be in this state of depression or have depressing moments but keep it pushing right or or keep going so hard or or keep what is it getting up and, and having this, this He's persistent right persistence and being resilient and being determined on, on not letting that that traumatizing situation affect their lives but men on the other hand we get depressed a, a lot of men get depressed and they're taking their lives do you know why that's a big question right there. We got to answer it. We could answer it. We could throw some small factors that's out there. Like I could start off by saying of uh, objectively right now, finances. Mm-hmm. When men don't um, feel like they are accomplished enough to do for themselves, let alone a family, instantly. Depressive mood. And I give you this example right here. You go outside and you step to anybody that's going through the same struggle that we're going through right now. And you ask them, how you doing? Their response is going to be, uh, I'm maintaining. Facts. I'm maintaining. And I ain't going to lie, I stopped using that word maintaining because we ain't not trying to just Ma- maintain. Nah, that's why when people ask me now, like, how's everything? I always tell them, like, man, I'm working hard. I'm handling what I got to handle because it's really, I'm not maintaining. I'm doing it. Hell yeah. I really tell people nowadays, I'm trying to be better than yesterday. Exactly. And one of the main issues uh, behind that suicide rate is that men don't feel like they're being better than yesterday. And what ties the finances into it is that most men, as they get older, they start to want a family, bro. Mm-hmm. You start to want to love life and stuff like that. One of your main responsibilities, right? And we don't think, like, the, even the mistakes we make in the past, like, we don't correct them right away quick enough to be able to accomplish those things. So, like, we get in situations or relationships and stuff like that and have to go through the idea of knowing that we can't do what we truly want to do. Mm-hmm. And then... That you look like a a, a wimp in mm-hmm. the eyes of your partner, and the, and that's a, like that goes into our man's pride and ego. Exactly, right? that's your whole that's exactly. our whole mantra, y'all. A whole man's a whole man's mantra back in the day until now was one provide, and that's one of your main responsibilities. It's three P's: take care of your responsibilities, provide, and, protect, um, prote- protect, of course, and handle your own right. Handle your own candle, and have a family right so those things right there so when you you as a man aren't doing those things right you fall into this state of depression you fall into this this funk you feel like you can't do it i mean right you can't do it and then those is why sometimes fathers leave the house because they aren't they they aren't providing right for their family leave so the house like, they they go and do something get locked up there's a lot of things that they do exactly but. go get locked up because that those ways they feel like I'm going to provide for my family quicker. I can have those means. Those is my skill set, even though it's not. If you have the same skill set to to start a whole drug operation like we done seen with people in the 80s, business. 90s, and uh, 2000s, you can start a whole business. Exactly. So it's just a mentality and decision making like we always say. But I think another reason is because a lot of people don't have a strong moral code and a strong faith in y'all so like look right look hold on hold on before you even do that i'm gonna point something out for you you said pride right pride and ego right big t- big you things. cannot have faith or moral code if you do not eliminate pride and ego pride and ego are emotional characteristics and men aren't supposed to walk their lives living with emotional characteristics andrew tate said this in the uh, interview with tucker carlson he gave a nice breakdown on depression and i'm gonna drop that on my channel too he basically said that and when men and, and go through stuff as simple as those things, like the love life or having to go out and do some illegal shit to make money, we're acting on our lowest level possible. When we are backed against the wall and things like that happen, we are immediately supposed to up it. We're supposed to activate the highest level of our brain and think on survive mode. Like, all right, how can I survive legally, of course, but that will allow me to put myself in a place to be a better man. You said pride and ego. I'm going to go back to it again. Emotions, bro. 
a lot of men, that percentage is really high, and this is for the exception of those who served in the war or those who faced some type of physical abuse or some type of sexual abuse as a child, those who were behind the pen and seen some shit that they wasn't supposed to see. The exception of those people, it's emotions, bro. We don't know how to control our emotions 100% correctly. So when things happen and we go into those funks and we let our pride and ego get in the way, mm -hmm. we stop ourselves from being able to receive blessings or even be able to have faith. You cannot have faith if your ego and your pride is in the way because the only thing you have faith of when in the process of dealing with your ego and your pride is it's your yourself. ego and your pride and yourself. yourself. That's uh, it. Yeah. And you need more than that. To get out of those situations, I can Facts. tell you that firsthand. That's a fact. That's you a big me? fact. That's a big fact. And honestly, I think that, like you just said, the, these emotions that, that we have, right? Because everybody has emotions, men and women. It's just how we act upon them, right? But these emotions is what put, put people in a state of depression. Facts. So, Not, Like we just explained. Exactly. So if, if you can, like know how to break out of something or know how to soothe yourself like we always say sometimes like or know how to one be productive but also know how to release your own stress because we all going to have we all have stress you feel me we all got things to take care of in our lives that be stressful right but if you know if you even if you don't know how to and you find ways to right that's going to lead you out of depression and, and out of darkness, out of this state of darkness, too, because you done found ways how to relieve the stress from your mind. That's what depression is when too much stress is on your mind and you just, ah, I can't, you feel me? I can't get through this, this obstacle right here or this shit keep occurring. This shit keep happening. If it keep happening, then do something different. Yeah, or, or right? like they say, like, but you when can't you, do the same thing and expect different results because it's insanity. Exactly, exactly. But when you lose a family member or you lose a friend or you lose somebody close to you or something traumatic happens, it, it's, it's sad to say, but it's going to happen. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's life. You feel me? Like, one thing I do, one thing I do hate is funerals, right? But at the end of the day, bro, I got to go. I want to pay my respects. And... I understand that God called you up. You feel me? I may not understand why, but I can't. I can't ask him why. You understand? It, it happened. You can't now, ask why because now, it's in front of now our that face. it happened, I can let my emotions out, but I can't be in this state of depression and think, "Oh man, now that now that this person is going that I love so much, I might as well not be here too." Bro, that's a sin in itself, and people don't even realize that. You want to hear something crazy about funerals? You should not take your life. You understand what I'm saying? And you shouldn't take nobody else's life. Those are two biggest sins because it's still murder. This is the thing about funerals. I'm going to give you a nice little breakdown on this. Ancient times. We're going to bring up the Choctaw, the Chickasaw. We're going to bring up the Creeks, Muscogees, Blackfoots, Pueblos, Comanches, Aztecs, Mayans, Incas, Peruvians, all of them. When their loved ones passed, they didn't cry. They didn't bitch and moan. They didn't. They didn't do half of. They didn't mourn, bro. They they mourned, but their version of mourning is to celebrate. All right, celebrate because life. we loved you in life, and now that you're gone, we're gonna celebrate you being able to go to a place where you won't experience none of this hurt no more. Mm. And what leads people to be depressed, especially during funerals, is the fact that everybody's sitting with that sorrow mm -hmm. and with that. That feeling like, dang, like, it's bad and this person just passed. Like, it's no longer able to be peace or it's no more beauty. And on top of that, the environment that you're placing yourself in, a funeral home, flowers, it's so silent. It's not too colorful. Those things are done to make you feel mm -hmm. like it's the end of the world or make you feel depressed. Like, that's why when they, even in ancient times, they said that they didn't bury their dead. Mm -hmm. they cremated them right and then they threw their ashes into the land because they were celebrating whatever life gave them mm -hmm. you feel me and and i'm happy you brought that up too because as long as we're living the way we live as a society more people are going to die so and that's just to say it straight up yeah that's a fact we have to learn how to be able to cope with that 
and to find a solution that allows us to deal with our coping mechanism and also develop and move forward. Mm -hmm. So we won't face these same hardships. Right. You don't want to de be depressed. Make a difference. You know? And and um, going back to the, the, def the definition of depression, I don't want to leave this out, but I'm going to make this one nice and cold for you guys. Depression, right? The first one he threw out was a uh, financial situation, right? Financial depression. The other one is sadness and, you know, you're feeling sorrow. You, you're feeling that empty space in your heart. And then the last one is a deep impression. I'm going to let y'all know where all of this connects. Depression is a deep impression that is left on you, whether it be a financial situation, whether it be from love or whether it be from pain, from anything. It's a deep impression, hence the definition that's left on you due to finances or due to whatever actions that you have conducted in your life that that made you feel that way or whatever cards the world has dealt with you. So it's crazy how they describe it as that and we're able to actually take that information and then pinpoint it, uh, pinpoint it around something and be able to co cultivate new definitions for the word depression. And like like we mentioned about the the word def the definition of depression and how it has a financial component that's why a lot of people be depressed in the first place now a lot of people don't have no money now you feel me and the, it's not even that they don't have no money they don't have the money that they want they don't have the money that that suffice for them to live a extravagant lifestyle or comfortable lifestyle cuz bro I done looked at the post a thousand times and it says if you make a hundred thousand dollars in New York, you bring in home thirty four thousand. That is fucking crazy. A hundred thousand is not even enough in general, though, bro. That's you gotta fucking crazy, you gotta look though. at it. We living in the time of inflation. That's one, right? People's spending habits are out out of this world. That's two, mm -hmm. three. It costs a lot just to eat. It exactly. costs a lot just to live. Just to live. So you can't take so all right of that there. and expect everybody to be but, but satisfied. But that right there. You know? You feel me? That right there, especially probably on parents, because we still, feel me, we still don't have no kids, and that's a blessing. It's a body butter season. It is here and is among us, because right now it's 46 degrees outside. So what happens during the summer I want to use body oil because it's nice and thin and it's light and it soaks into your skin nice and easy and it's great for the warmer seasons. However, when you get into the colder months like fall, winter comes around, especially if you're up in the Northeast or in Chicago, wherever, you're going to want to use something more thick like our shea butter or our body butters. These are a fan favorite. It comes in different scents and different varieties. It is going to lock into your skin. It's using saturated oils plus beeswax to actually lock it into your skin and to retain that moisture your entire day. No water, no alcohol, no fragrances. Just 100%, 100% natural, natural, natural ingredients. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Contact at GarnersGarden.com. Thank you. You feel me? Don't let that go over your head. But you feel me what I'm saying? Especially on those people, though, is what I'm what I be thinking about because that's why they be so stressed out. Also, it's super hard to live. It's super hard to to eat. You feel me? You should eat in your crib and cook. You feel me? It's saving more bread. It's more healthier. But either way, if you wanted to go out, you feel me? It's it's expensive sometimes, right? You got kids, so you got to make sure they good. So it's just you, you can understand. You feel me? How somebody can be stressed out and let things take want to pull their hair out. But at the end of the day, I feel like we have to just pray. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's we got to because more that, than that, bro. It's more than that. More, Super than, more that. than that. But when you when you have this 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 bond with God with with Yah, right? This depression state that people be in, you won't feel it as much. I I would say that's cap because. But I it's disagree. not though because I you will. I disagree. You you will see that light at the end of the tunnel. You will see that it's not your 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 tunnel won't be dark for all your days. It won't be dark. You could be you could have your dark tunnel for three weeks. If you broke, you right? broke. No, if you broke, you broke. But if you broke, it, faith faith without work is dead. You broke, you broke. You That's need to I put said, some motherfucking. I disagree. You need to put some work in. I would never put. But with that faith problems and God with your means. work, nah. Don't put your financial problems in God. Put your work in and have your faith 
add to that. That's the point of what I'm, you feel me, what I'm always going to say to somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Without no work, faith is dead. So you putting all this work in, your blessings is going to come. You got to work. You understand what I'm saying? Your blessings is going to come. So yep. that's why I'm saying a person that that faith is super strong, they 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 see that light at the end of the tunnel. They know, I, I, I know it's not going to be raining on me forever. This dark cloud will not be on me forever, right? I know that. I know that I'm putting this work in, so next month, I'm I'm not expecting nothing, but I, I know your I results. should have something. You have your results. You feel me? Yeah. I'm not expecting nothing, but I know I should have something. You just answered right? the problem to most uh, most emotional men. They are emotional because they cannot meet their the, the needs exactly. of society or the standards of society. But their issue is that they don't look in the mirror and see that I have to work hard. You cannot leave the matrix or leave a place of depression or anything that's making you feel, feel down without money. And once you understand that, you're kind of able to grasp that idea like, okay, I cannot sit here and be sad because I'm broke. Exactly. Because it's meant to be this way. <laughs> if I sit here and be sad, I'm going to sit here and be sad. That's so all that's going to fucking that's happen, it. bro. You got to go work and you got to go <laughs> You got to go put some type of pain in. Even if you just mopping or sweeping the floors, it don't matter. Five, ten dollars an hour, you got to do something. You have to. You make yourself a liability as a man when you don't. You know what? You know what's so funny? And... and it's it's really not funny. It's really just funny because when you think about it, it'll make you chuckle, right? I was watching something and reading something at the same time because it was saying damn near the same thing, right? It's always a passive and it's always an active. Pa pa uh, always an active and a passive player in the situation. Mm -hmm. It's and, like that in GTA. And, and when I mean a situation, I'm talking about this game of life, right? If you sitting on your ass doing nothing... You're the fucking passive the person. Passive person. Mm -hmm. Because you're sitting on your ass doing nothing. You went to school or you probably dropped out and then you didn't figure out nothing else to do with your life. You didn't have no real dreams, no real aspirations. Now the active person, the active player that's in this situation is motherfucking life. Is 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 the bank system. Is the the your counterparts. Is your your parents that either one coddled you and still don't tell you the real, or just your your mom that say, oh, it's a, it's gonna be alright, and you feel me? Which is most moms today. So people gotta understand, like time is gonna keep moving, and you still gonna have these active players in your life, but your passive ass still gonna be in the same state. Same so spot, what you gonna do? Same spot, same mental space, same all that. It's either everything. It's either I change the way I'm playing this game, or I'm gonna end up with the same outcome, which is I'm ending up on the loser side of the of the table. It's funny that you mentioned that too, because um, Dragon Ball Z, they got an episode and it's out on YouTube. But I got I brought Crunchyroll, so I'm able to watch all the seasons whenever I want. But on YouTube, they got a specific part of the episode called the Battle of the Gods Tournament. And that's basically where they got each universe fighting against one another. And a lot of you not, bro. A lot of you not. I'm going to always mention this because I feel like now I, I had favorite superheroes as a child. Batman, Superman, Flash. But ain't nobody fucking with Goku. Mm -hmm. Goku is the realest, the illest motherfucker that's out there. This nigga will get his ass beat a hundred times, bro, and get right back up and you mentioned passive it's so funny because during the fight he's fighting Jiren Jiren is probably one of the most powerful I would guess say superhuman motherfuckers in, uni in the universe 11 universe 12 whatever universe he is in Goku is getting whipped bro bad like terribly bad and after each ass whipping he's changing up his approach like alright I'm gonna attack this nigga this way all right, I'm going to conserve this amount of energy so that when it's time to go for the final blow, I can activate Ultra Instinct and really get him, like really get on him. So he's letting Jiren win these battles purposely, I'm assuming, but he's getting right back up. And I'm talking about getting beat, bro, getting beat. Like to where you, if, if, if a regular human get beat like that, they're dead, bro. He punched Sun head in the floor. <laughs> 
that shit was crazy. I'm like, damn. But it stood out so much to me because I'm like, this has been a cartoon that we've been seeing on TV for years, but yet nobody was able to pick up the superior message behind it all. Mm. Don't never give up. Goku has so much faith, he could put his hands in the air like this and call out to his friends and family and receive energy and turn that into a spirit bomb. That spirit bomb eliminates his uh, his uh, 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 opponents instantly, bro, but... What got him to develop that energy was the faith that he has in the earth and his people. Mm -hmm. He won't let himself fall because if he falls, then he's letting his people down. All right. So I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, wow, like when you're going through adversity and you're going through situations where you're being beat or you're losing, the best thing to do is to always get back up and find a new approach. Not because you're satisfying yourself, but we always got people that's relying on us. Facts. We got people that's looking out for us or that's looking up to us, that's expecting us to uphold our end of the bargain. Facts. And when we fold and we crunch up. CDC when I'm out on Nevada. Light blue, light Dolce Gabbana. Fuck niggas, stay away from